today's video I thought I would do a how to revise English literature and language for GCSE. I thought I'd do some more GCSE tips videos because it's sort of becoming like a yearly thing like I did one last year, one the year before. So this is like my third one so I thought I would do it. These tips can be applied to whatever grade you're going to try and get you want to get whether it's just a four and like move on or a, you want to get a top top grade isn't that right so look English is definitely one of those subjects where you either love or hate it I really enjoy English as a subject there's kind of no in between like obviously I've had times where I found it really difficult but I do enjoy English English is also a subject I'm good at, but I still do need to work quite hard for because there's not really any subjects that I haven't had to work hard for. Like, I'm not particularly talented or particularly gifted in anything. I've always sort of got to where I am with, like, hard work. So that was just a bit of background, so let's just get into it. English language. This is an interesting one when it comes to revision. I definitely find like reading books helps, like reading a wide range of texts helps because this gives you a bit of like punctuation and gets used to like different kinds of writing and there's lots of different writings will come up in English. You just have to be prepared for them. Like you definitely revise English language in different ways to revising English literature. English literature is a lot more memorisation, whereas English language is a lot more analysing texts and creative writing and it's a lot more written focus, whereas English literature is a lot more reading focus, memorising and... But both English literature and language have like one thing in common, they're limited on the time. You think you have loads of time, and this has happened to me where I've gone a bit complacent. I did. I got a bit complacent with time. So don't get complacent with the time. Be quite strict with yourself on time. So give yourself enough time to answer each question in the allocated time. For each question, plan your answer, write your answer, and double check at the end. You need to know what skills are required. There are comprehension questions, deeper analysis, creative writing. Just so you know what's coming up. Follow PIL if you have to, but don't use it if you don't have to. Be more creative because being more creative makes you stand out and shows the answer examiners that you can write creatively instead of following a fixed structure. Think about your language devices, your structured devices, your word meanings, word choices, symbolic as well as literal meanings. Explain the writer's word choices, why they chose to use that word or why they chose that structure or why they use that language device. Think about the audience. What is the audience that the text is aimed at? Think outside the box. YouTubers to watch I use were Mr. Bruff and Course Heroes. We'll link both channels down below. They help to get my grade four. If you want to watch both my results day videos to see what I got like both times. And there'll probably be another one this year. So I will link both of those down below. I always look at the questions before reading the text because it gives an idea of what to look for in that text. You can look for the stuff you need to find. Highlight the text for language and structure devices. Use it only on the text, not on your exam paper. Because I found highlighting things helped me to find them again without having to go back through the text and find them again. How I write my paragraphs, so I'm going to briefly talk through, but I did do a video on how 
I write my English essays, so I'll also link that down below. Thought I'd just briefly talk through it, but I do explain it a lot better in that video, so I would recommend checking it out if you want to know in much more detail. What I would do is I would use a really fixed structure because I had to, so... But I wouldn't use pill if I didn't have to because the point is being more creative. Because I find it's good to be more creative because it makes you stand out more. Pill, I find I don't love it but I don't hate it. It took me time to get into the swing of writing in a really fixed structure because I never really used a fixed structure. So I would come up with a point, have a point. This makes the other sections easier. Then I would find a quote to back up my point. Key tip for English, remember your quotes. Then I would give an explanation. Then I would link it back to my point. But my essay video goes into even more depth. And... Look at example essays, see what they've included and what's missing in yours. Look at essays before looking at what grade they got and guess what grade they got and then look at what grade they've got. Focus on like your weaker parts more than your strong points. Read mark schemes and examiners reports because this shows mistakes and what you already have and what you're doing that you don't need to do. Now we're going to move on to talking about English literature. English literature, hardest thing to do is memorise quotes from different texts. I never really knew how to revise quotes or how to remember quotes, but you don't have to remember a super long quotes. You can memorise like one word quotes. But some tips I've learned from like watch other videos that I think would really help. Just write out your quotes on like flashcards and or even just write them on a piece of paper then blurt out quotes and then add the ones you missed. I also did character summaries to help with like Dracula. For all the characters I like made character summaries and this just gives a summary from the text itself from videos just so you have all the information on a character in one place. So you have like information about the character, quotes. You can also do quote flashcards and then to check your understanding of the quotes. And to see if you've learnt them you can do blurting and then correct your mistakes. There's many different ways you can do it. Annotate your poems and I made information powerpoints on all the poems. I did power and conflict poetry. Mr. Bruff does videos on all of the love and romance and power and conflict poems. I did power and conflict. Analyse quotes, languages, devices, just digging deep. This gives the poem information in one place so you can just go back through the powerpoint and look. English literature structure, have a point and then have a quote to back it up then explain the quote and talk about the context where the quote's from and also link it back to your point. Stay good quality throughout your essay, don't just do a few nice paragraphs and then the quality decrease, keep it a consistent good quality. Plan before you write. Do it very simple. Plan only for like five to ten minutes. I would take around five to ten minutes. Sometimes it would be five minutes, sometimes it would be ten minutes. But plan no longer than that. Read example essays because this shows what makes a good essay structure and what doesn't. If you find words you think you need to add into it or write them down, keep a note. So that you can use better word choices in your essays. Like don't just copy them but use those more interesting words because then it shows your vocabulary and you can expand your vocabulary. 
also don't just use one quote and forget about it. Use that quote multiple times. Remember to embed your quotations into your essay. Remember quotation marks and punctuation. Hope you found this video helpful. There will be more revision videos coming. If you want any more on different subjects, I've got some on my channel. But I can also make some more. So I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you in another video. Bye.